Look at that. That's a beautiful red radish. Planting a seed, taking care of it, seeing the little green thing coming up out of the ground, all of it gives me a feeling of accomplishment and hope. <laughs> it's terrible. A few years ago, our son Sam got sick after eating contaminated chicken. Why am I resistant to every single antibiotic that they're giving me? It was a wake-up call. It forced us to ask a lot of questions about food. See, so you're just going to take pictures instead of carrying soil and crap and dirt. I'm cultivating a story. My wife Jennifer wants to raise chickens in our backyard and get the whole family to understand where our food comes from and how we can grow it ourselves. Oh man, that's awesome. Concern amongst parents and pediatricians is growing. Everyone is worried that our children aren't going to live as long as we do. Type 1 diabetes. Genetically modified food. Factory farms. Antibiotics. Resistant superbugs. It's alarming and overwhelming, but change is really hard. It's not so intimidating if you do a little bit at a time. I'm going to buy 10% more fresh, local, and organic foods. For the past year, we've been filming our first steps into the food revolution. Danny was figuring out what they were paying for each egg. I don't think they're going to get any eggs. And much bigger steps taken by food patriots who inspire us to keep going. I just thought like, well, now's the time again, right? Now's the time for people that can do something to do something. This was just harvest today, today. We have to make this a factory. It's gonna be a produce factory. I mean, the big stores are great if we could get them to come into the community, but that's not the only answer. This is one bus, Lisa, in a city of three million people. This is a drop in the bucket. Can we really make a difference doing this little 10% change? Try that baby. Crunchy, oh yes, that's a cute. You're gonna get people thinking about what they're really eating. You have them thinking about what is going into our foods, what is going into our bodies. The small, sustainable operations that they're talking about, I don't know how we'd feed the world doing that. If we allow chickens, we're gonna have to consider allowing pet pigs. If you're gonna allow pet pigs, you're gonna have to look at allowing goats. You know, Gandhi had a great quote. He said, anyone who thinks they're too small to make a difference has never been in bed with a mosquito. At the end of the day, we have all the power. I really believe in the power of one. This thing was a couple of people. And look what it's become. It's this huge community thing, and this is only going to grow. I'm not sure where this can lead, but I'm trying to prove to myself and my wife that you can teach an old dog new tricks. You know where my chicken is? I think that's where I hear my parents, you know, like, well, if you don't like it, change it. I think that's what a food patriot is, someone that wants to make something better, and will do whatever it takes to do that. This is way, way more than 10%. Okay, you're kidding me. Okay, hi, Robert. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs>